Hello everyone, I would like to welcome you all for today's lecture. First we would like to uh, look at briefly what we did last time and then we proceed further. So in the last class we um, looked at some aspects of uh, Claisen rearrangement and uh, we looked at the uh, mechanism of the Claisen rearrangement which is uh, 3, 3 sigma tropic rearrangement. So what we looked at it is uh, if we have uh, well substituted uh, uh, molecules like this which are allyl vinyl ethers and if we uh, keep the geometry of the double bond fixed here and make a change here that means allylic uh, double bond uh, so we will get different products uh, with different configuration. And uh, obviously if uh, there is an asymmetric center here and if that is a molecule which is a chiral molecule then uh, the chirality gets transferred because it is a concerted reaction. So these, these aspects we saw and of course uh, we looked at how the products change based on the change in configuration of the allylic double bond or even vinylic uh, ether double bond if we keep the other double bond fixed. So if one of the double bonds is fixed the other double bond can be changed and accordingly the, the different products with the different configurations come. Then we also looked at the aromatic Claisen rearrangement where allyl phenyl ether uh, were allowed to kind of react in a similar fashion uh, where the double bond, uh, one of the double bonds of uh, the allyl phenyl ether was actually an aromatic part of it. We also looked at the uh, mechanism part of it and especially from the solvent point of view that if we have polar solvents or hydrogen uh, bonding uh, uh, kind of solvents such as ethanol, water, etc., the reaction rate is uh, uh, enhanced. And that is mainly because of the possibility of such type of uh, intermediates or particularly the iron pair type of intermediate that is a slightly charged intermediate and therefore the reaction uh, is uh, much better in such solvents. Then uh, towards the um, end we also saw the variation of uh, Claisen rearrangement which is uh, Johnson Claisen rearrangement and uh, specifically I mentioned many times that if we take an allyl alcohol and react it with uh, triethyl ortho acetate under acidic conditions and heat it then we get uh, an intermediate of uh, this type. Uh, this intermediate as you can see has uh, the, all the elements of the Claisen rearrangement except that we have an extra uh, O ethyl group here and that is exactly what allows the uh, reaction to occur and to form what we called it as that alpha beta, gamma, delta. So gamma, delta unsaturated ester. So if we start with allyl alcohol and uh, perform Johnson Claisen rearrangement we get the uh, gamma, delta unsaturated ester. And we also took some examples of uh, uh, the application of organic uh, in organic synthesis. Now towards the end then we saw the uh, Asian moser claisen rearrangement. If you look at the uh, intermediate, this is the intermediate that is um, the intermediate which we can compare it with the uh, Johnson claisen rearrangement. Johnson claisen rearrangement intermediate was something of this sort where we had the uh, ethoxy group and this is what led to the formation of gamma delta unsaturated ester. And for this purpose what we had used was uh, triethyl ortho uh, acetate and, uh, and here what we are using it is, is uh, here actually there should be a CH3. So uh, this is what we had used last time and uh, what, what uh, here is being used is, uh, is two methoxies and uh, 
two methoxies and a uh, N and dimethyl group and a methyl group here. So it's exactly the same as more or less like, like this except that we have nitrogen here and of course a methyl group is there as expected and you have two methoxies instead of two ethoxy. It does not really matter whether it is two methoxy or two ethoxy. So this is the, the reagent which is used in here and we saw the mechanism of it last time that this is what cleaves off and then of course the uh, attachment of the uh, uh, this pair pair of electron takes place onto the um, the carbon atom here and uh, the positive charge gets neutralized to form this intermediate which is what is this one here and that loses the proton to form this intermediate of this kind which of course and upon rearrangement then to goes to this uh, uh, now we can see here that you have alpha, beta, gamma and delta but it is gamma delta unsaturated uh, amide it's a it's a tertiary amide so you have a gamma delta unsaturated amide so what is the difference the difference is that of course is uh, uh, that we have a possibility of reducing this uh, amide to form the corresponding amine and uh, of course uh, we can also hydrolyze it and get the same ester or acid whatever we want it. But main thing is here that we can get the corresponding amine with this particular variation. And it is not uh, really done under acidic conditions it is just uh, reflux into alvene. One of the applications of this Eschen Moser uh, clays and rearrangement is uh, the conversion of this type of uh, uh, molecules where we uh, have uh, a um, double bond at this particular position and if this is the intermediate that can form upon reaction with the reagent that we employ in Eschen Moser uh, clays and rearrangement then that undergoes elimination to form the um, this intermediate and that undergoes rearrangement obviously it is going to be from this side it is going to be here and then here and then here. So this is how it happens and we get this particularly molecule which is a, a quaternary carbon containing uh, uh, this amide group here and uh, as you can see that the geometry of the um, uh, particular this group here is beta oriented and in the product also it is beta oriented. So uh, you, the chirality is uh, retained uh, in these products. Uh, so it is very clear that uh, the reaction is occurring uh, by the reaction of this alcohol onto this particular um, double ammonium ion and of course you get the product which is like this. So this is a, a beautiful application of the Asian mother fragmentation. Now what, what can be done is of course is you have uh, uh, a very nice uh, uh, amide group here and you have an ester group here and both of them are beta oriented. Of course if one wants one can do the epimerization here and be, and convert this into alpha orientation or whichever way one wants to manipulate the uh, molecule according to uh, requirement you know, from the synthesis point of view. Now there is another uh, rearrangement which is called as a Bellus uh, Claisen rearrangement and that is a uh, reaction of allyl ethers of this kind allyl ethers or allyl amines or allyl thioethers that means this oxygen this X can be either oxygen, sulfur or nitrogen. When this is reacted with uh, a ketene uh, then uh, what happens is that the lone pair of electron on the, on the uh, allylic uh, ether or amine or thioether and it interacts it onto this here and uh, clearly this moves out here. So what you have is, is a possibility of uh, X group here reacting with a lone pair of electron coming on 
on reaction like this and this is what is formed here. And once that is formed now one can see it very clearly that what you have is uh, you 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6 and this undergoes uh, the re rearrangement as expected and you have the ring expansion and forming this kind of product. It is obvious that the uh, geometry of uh, this group here would affect uh, the stereochemistry of the asymmetric center that is being created. But interestingly this reaction occurs at room temperature as you can see because there is a, a very uh, strong uh, driving force for the double bond to move because there is a negative charge here. At the same time there is a driving force for uh, cleaving the carbon X bond which is positively charged. So uh, the, the reaction uh, requires uh, not very high temperature and the reaction occurs at, at room temperature. So this is uh, what is a variation of the Claisen rearrangement which is called as Bellus Claisen rearrangement. Now uh, there is uh, also an Azza Claisen rearrangement uh, which is uh, kind of uh, an imenium and can serve uh, as a pi bonded moiety. Like for example, if you have a methyl group here attached to this uh, imenium ion here, then of course we can uh, deprotonate that. So, so there is a hydrogen here. If uh, hydrogen is deprotonated by butyl lithium, then of course we can uh, generate this uh, type of intermediate here. And this type of intermediate is now well suited as you can see it is an enamine kind of thing with an oxygen also being here and then that undergoes a rearrangement. So essentially the all these reactions are nothing but, but uh, uh, an arrangement of atoms in such a fashion that you have a possibility of uh, 3, 3 sigma tropic rearrangements where one can uh, put uh, heteroatoms of different kind and uh, make the reaction work. Now here it, it requires high temperature because it does not have similar situation as we saw in the Bayless uh, Claisen rearrangement. So it is a slightly different. However, of course uh, depending on the stereochemistry of the uh, double bond here, uh, we are going to look at the uh, possibility of getting um, different uh, uh, as, uh, absolute configurations at this center in case. Uh, uh, the cis or trans double bond. If the, of course, this reaction is not a chiral reaction, but the, uh, we are only talking about the uh, the uh, ge geometry based uh, uh, re rearrangement to get to this product. Of course, if this happens to be a chiral center, then of course the we are now going to talk about the absolute configuration in terms of this one because now that will be a kind of diastereoselective reaction, and of course. If this influences uh, the geometry of this one then of course we can look at and that is the reason why the diastereoselectivity selectivity comes into the range of uh, 52 to 78 percent uh, if uh, this happens to be a, a stereo defined center. Now we have uh, a Thaya Claisen rearrangement where uh, instead of uh, Azza Claisen rearrangement if we have a Thaya molecule something of this kind here then uh, what is going to happen is, uh, is uh, we will have uh, uh, possibility of uh, deprotonating uh, uh, a proton from here and then we, if we react with uh, RBR then we can introduce here uh, an R group, an alkyl group or uh, any such uh, carbon-carbon bonded uh, species and when this is heated uh, with calcium carbonate uh, then of course you have this uh, Thaya Claisen rearrangement and uh, we can get a molecule of this kind which uh, uh, during the workup will get uh, hydrolyzed and the corresponding uh, aldehyde would form. Now uh, this is uh, uh, somewhat uh, related to, uh, uh, to the 2, 3 sigma topic rearrangement of this kind uh, where we have uh, such possibility uh, uh, it is just to indicate that such a thing can happen and of course uh, one can get if we have R group here. So it is related to this particular kind of rearrangement. 
Now what is the utility of these kind of uh, reactions and uh, the interesting reactions of this kind are uh, in the synthesis of uh, for example gamma cyclocytral. Now here if we start with uh, uh, a 1,3-diethylene which is basically a protected formaldehyde. If we take a formaldehyde and protect it with, uh, with a, a thiol which is a dithiol. So if we can take uh, uh, something of this type then we can react them together to form this intermediate. And this is a uh, commercially available substrate where if we react with allyl bromide which is a very easy substrate. So then you have a lone pair of electron attacking onto this particular carbon and this uh, carbon bromine bond breaks to form this sulfonium bromide where there is already a double bond. Now if we uh, make uh, uh, an ion from this particular substrate by reacting with butyl lithium then we expect that this particular hydrogen will be picked up and uh, what we will get is, is uh, this kind of anion and this anion can undergo the rearrangement uh, and as we discussed above is the 2, 3 sigma tropic rearrangement kind of thing as we discussed it here. Similar reactions would occur here and to form this particular rearranged dithione here. This is a rearranged dithione which uh, can be uh, cleaved uh, hydrolytically at this particular uh, position and we can get the corresponding aldehyde here. So this is uh, uh, essentially uh, this reaction or this reaction here uh, requires that there should be availability of uh, uh, 6 electrons for electrocyclization. It is kind of electrocyclization here and of course the uh, reaction is uh, concerted reaction. Now uh, if we uh, uh, try to look at uh, the variations in terms of uh, the application of uh, such reactions uh, in organic synthesis what can be done. For example if uh, uh, we say that okay we want to convert and a formaldehyde into uh, this kind of substrate. Now this substrate if we look at the, the previous example that we took, we had here uh, hydrogen. Yeah. But we started with the corresponding bromide and we started with the dithion here. So we have to recognize that whether we uh, uh, start with the corresponding um, bromide here or whether we start with, with uh, alcohol. So it is very clear that we have to convert the alcohol into a leaving group and therefore it could be bromide or it could be mesylate or it could be tosylate. But at the same time in order to make a nucleophilic attack onto this carbon atom while we are thinking of converting this into a leaving group we also have to make sure that we generate an equivalent of the uh, dithione that is uh, this particular dithione anion we have to make it and therefore we have to convert this into this. So in an examination point of view if this, this particular reaction is given where this is to be formed then obviously one should also think about how a phenyl group is going to come. So from phenyl point of view one can think about it as that we can start with the benzaldehyde and then we carry out the same reaction and we can probably make it easily uh, with uh, the same thiol, dithiol uh, that means we take uh, this kind of uh, dithiol. So if we have this dithiol, so then we will make 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and the carbon number there 6. So we can make a 6 membered uh, such substrate and of course then we can remove this particular proton by butyl lithium and we can generate the corresponding uh, species which will be having a phenyl ring here. So one can have a, nu a nucleophile of this kind. So either we have that. Uh, uh, as one of the possibilities that we can consider or we can uh, think about such a possibility and later on uh, after we have got the formal formyl group here then we can do by uh, reaction with uh, phenyl magnesium bromide. So let us go with this so we, we can convert this uh, by appropriately converting into a bromine as a leaving group a dithione as a group here then of course 
we can get the corresponding uh, this substrate here and then we have a positive charge here and we put here x minus x minus could, could be a bromide or could be a tosylate or whatever and now if we carry out the reaction here then of course we have such a possibility and then we can convert uh, this uh, product into into then the formal group here uh, which we discussed with Hg plus plus and H3O plus uh, water, water and then of course we can get the corresponding aldehyde here. Uh, there should be directly there should be a carbon atom here. So we should get aldehyde here and once we have got the aldehyde here then we can carry out phenyl magnesium bromide reaction and of course then followed by oxidation uh, any oxidation like for example PCC we do the oxidation here then what we will get is, is uh, corresponding CO phenyl. So this is how the reaction can be done. On the other hand we can uh, directly start with this particular substrate. So we will always have a phenyl group here and then you can we do not have to do this extra step here. So either we do the extra step to start with or we do the extra step later on. So this is how the application of uh, uh, such uh, molecules can be expected to be uh, looked at in the, in the synthesis of different kinds of molecules and of course also from the examination point of view. Now uh, how, do, how does the hydrolysis uh, occur? Uh, how does the hydrolysis of this diethylene uh, based molecule once um, we have uh, uh, activated the anion next to the sulfur this is what it is. So what happens is that essentially the one of the lone pair of electrons on this that reacts with, uh, uh, with the mercury plus and of course you generate uh, this type of sulfonium ion and then you have a lone pair of electron here that opens up in the here in this fashion and of course you get this intermediate. Now this intermediate is then attacked by water and uh, water attacks and forms a kind of hemi thioacidal. One can uh, tentatively write the structure to be like this and what you have here is uh, uh, this uh, intermediate which is not stable and then therefore it breaks here to form the uh, ketone, it regenerates the ketone and then of course you will have the thio species which is present here. In uh, uh, most of the cases this thio species is some uh, sort of thiol uh, but then in, in a, a which we are not particularly interested in recovering at this stage because we are more interested in the ketone that is formed. However, there have been uh, reports in the literature where it is possible that if we convert instead of uh, dithion we take the corresponding sulfoxide that means we convert this sulfide into a sulfoxide by oxidation and then if you treat with HCl then what happens is, is the, this is the intermediate upon protonation takes place and then this particular uh, lone pair of electron on this uh, actually forms uh, a species of something of this kind where there is a sulfur sulfur bond which is formed and of course you will have this and the positive charge here and you might say that okay let it be as it is here. Now this is the one that uh, intermediate then breaks upon hydrolysis and the water then reacts in this fashion here. So you have water reacting in this way to form this intermediate uh, which uh, would look somewhat like this and uh, then what you have is a is a hemiacetal as we discussed earlier time and of course this can just simply break off from here and you can generate the ketone and uh, then what is observed is, is of course 
that you do get a 5 member sulfur, sulfur containing bond. So the reason why I have mentioned is that is that such a uh, uh, reaction where the recovery of the ketone along with the uh, formation of this 5 member uh, sulfur sulfur bond uh, is uh, noticed and that has been utilized in the synthesis of a molecule called lipoic acid. It is a very important uh, molecule and the synthesis of that in a very uh, nice fashion has been reported by making use of this kind of uh, reaction where the emphasis is not on the ketone but the emphasis is on the side product which is uh, this dihythine SS bond containing a 5 membered uh, this particular heterocyclic moiety. So this is how the reaction of uh, dihythines uh, occur and uh, the uh, um, usefulness of this is that we can uh, do various kinds of uh, sulfur catalyzed uh, thioclase in the arrangement. Now we have uh, uh, another rearrangement which is called a chain map rearrangement which is also known as 3,3 phosphor immediate rearrangement or Staudinger claisen reaction. It involves conversion of an allylic alcohol to the corresponding phosphite ester and then via the Staudinger reaction to the rearranged allylamine. The driving force is the formation of more stable phosphorus oxygen double bond from phosphorus nitrogen double bond and this drives the reaction. Let us take an example. If we take an allylic alcohol of this kind and react with this chlorophosphite in presence of a base then we get the corresponding phosphite ester like this which then reacts with uh, an azide like RN3 and forms an intermediate of this particular type via what is called a Staudinger reaction and then this undergoes Claisen rearrangement to form this particular type of intermediate in which this phosphorus nitrogen double bond has been converted to the phosphorus oxygen double bond which is more stable than this particular phosphorus nitrogen double bond and thus this undergoes acidic hydrolysis to release the corresponding allylamine. That means this particular bond gets cleaved. Now what is the Staudinger reaction? The Staudinger reaction is reaction of an azide with a trivalent phosphine or phosphite and then that leads to the formation of this kind of uh, intermediate which then leads to another intermediate which is of a four member type which loses nitrogen gas to form this nitrogen phosphorus double bond and upon aqueous workup under acidic condition leads to the formation of triphenylphosphine oxide and releases the corresponding amine. This is exactly what has been utilized in this particular allylic alcohol case. So we have converted the alcohol to the corresponding amine with of course a rearrangement and that involves the movement of the double bond from here to here and formation of a carbon nitrogen bond here. So this is what is known as chain map rearrangement. So we will stop it at this stage and then take up the uh, remaining part of this uh, kind of reactions in the next class. Till then uh, you take care of it and uh, study these reactions carefully and till then bye. Thank you.